Hello, welcome to the Normal Childbirth module and we're going to be talking about the foetal skull this morning um, and I'm going to be using this plastic model of the foetal skull just to show you various um, aspects of the foetal skull that's really important to midwifery practice um, and these, er these things that we're going to be talking about are the different areas of the foetal skull, the different bones that make up the foetal skull, the sutures um, and the fontanelles of the foetal skull. So we're going to be looking at the, uh, the foetal skull and in midwifery practice we divide the foetal skull up into three areas. These areas are the vault, the face and the base. Um, and if we look at the front of the foetal skull first, the face is where um, it's the area from between the orbital ridges, which is this area here, um, and it extends all the way from downwards to where the corner of the jaw meets our neckline. That area there is called the face. The base of the foetal skull, as if I turn it over slightly, is where the skull joins our spinal column um, and it extends from there to this area here, um, this area here that you can see um, at the base of this bone here. And then the remainder of the foetal skull is called the vault and this area extends from the orbital ridges all the way across right to where it meets the base um, here in the nape of our neck. In midwifery practice, it's the vault that's got the biggest implications for our midwifery practice, um, and the vault actually comprises seven bones. These seven bones are, if we look at the front here, we've got frontal bones, and we've got two frontal bones. We've got the left and the right frontal bone. That's these two bones here. Coming towards the posterior aspect now, we've got two parietal bones, and we've got the left and the right parietal bone. So if we look at this from the side, we've got the frontal bones, we've got the pr two parietal bones here, and then if we look at the back of the foetal skull, we've got this bone here, and this bone here is called the occiput. The final two bones that make up the vault are the um, temporal bones, and it's just the superior aspect of the temporal bones um, which make up the vault, and it's these, these small areas here and again we've got a left and a right temporal bone so that's the right temporal bone and then that's the left temporal bone. The next thing that we need to know about are the sutures um, and sutures are actually are the cranial joints which are formed where two bones meet so where the two frontal bones meet here we've got the frontal suture where the two parietal bones meet along here, we've got the sagittal suture. Where the two frontal bones meet the two parietal bones, we've got the coronal suture, which runs along here. And then if we look at the back, where the two parietal bones meet the occipital bone, we've got the lamboidal suture. And sutures are a really important um, part of um, the anatomy that actually changes during the process of childbirth because it allows a degree of overlap of the skull bones um, during the birth process um, and that's known as moulding and that's really important. The final thing that we need to look at on the external structure of the foetal skull are fontanelles and fontanelles are where there are areas where two or more sutures meet um, and in layman's terms we call them the soft spots and we've got two fontanelles of note we've got the um, lamboidal fontanelle which is here so the lamboidal runs between the occipital bone and the two parietal bones and then we've got the bragma um, suture with uh, bragma fontanelle sorry and the bragma fontanelle is this area here that runs between the two frontal bones and the two parietal bones here. So now we've learned about the bones, the sutures and the fontanelles of the foetal skull, uh, the next thing that we need to think about are the diameters, the actual measurements of the foetal skull. Um, and we tie this, this knowledge and understanding in with the anatomy of the pelvis that we know to help us guide our midwifery practice um, during normal childbirth. Um, and there are six longitudinal diameters of the foetal skull that we need to know about um, and there are two transverse diameters of the foetal skull and the longitudinal diameters go go kind of from here 
um, and the transverse go from one side to the other um, here. So the longitudinal diameters that we need to know, the first one is the SOB diameter or the suboccipitopragmatic diameter and this is 9.5 centimetres and this is measured just below the occipital protuberance which is just here to the anterior fontanelle or the anterior the bragma so that's the sub occipitopragmatic diameter and that's always 9.5 centimetres the next diameter is the sub occipitofrontal diameter and this is 10 centimetres and this is measured from below the occipital protuberance again to the centre of the frontal suture which is here so this is the sub occipitofrontal or SOF diameter which is 10 centimetres the next diameter is the occipitofrontal diameter and this is 11.5 centimetres and again this is measured from the occipito, um, occipital protuberance which is here to the glabella and the glabella is here the glabella is the same as the midline between the orbital ridges so that's the glabella there and that's the occipital protuberance there um, and that is 11.5 centimetres the next diameter is the mento vertical diameter which is 13 and this measures from the uh, from the point of the chin this is the chin's called the mentum this bit here is called the mentum so this is from the mentum to the highest point on the vertex which is just here so that's the um, mento vertical diameter and that's 13.5 centimeters the next one is the sub mento vertical diameter or the SMV which is 11.5 centimetres and this is measured from the point where the chin joins the neck so from here to the highest point on the vertex which is here so that's the sub mento vertex or SMV diameter the final diameter longitudinal diameter is the sub mento pragmatic diameter or the SMB diameter which is 9.5 centimetres and this is measured from the point where the chin joins the neck which is here to the centre of the bragma which is here so that would be the sub mento pragmatic or SMB diameter so we've looked at the longitudinal diameters of the foetal skull now we need to look at the transverse diameters of the foetal skull and we've got two transverse diameters so we've got the, the skull with the head pointing downwards We've got the biparietal diameter, which is the diameter between the two parietal eminences. So it's eminences are where um, ossification starts on bones, um, and it's usually um, a protuberance that, that it's comes out of the bone. Um, and so the biparietal diameter is between the two um, parietal eminences um, on the parietal bones, and that's 9.5 centimetres. Um, and then the bitemporal diameter is the one at the front um, and that's 8.2 centimetres and that's the diameter between the two furthest points of the coronal sutures at the temples. So remember this is the coronal suture so it's at their widest point which is at the temple. So they're the two transverse diameters.